folks. Uh, I'm back in the studio here. Yesterday I was in the kitchen. <laughs> I was feeling inspired in the kitchen. So, just trying to get myself back into a bit of a routine here. Um, So, yeah, I hope you're all doing well out there. What I'm doing right now is I've just got a couple of tankards here that I just need to quickly pop some handles on. So I've got my banding wheel here. Um, let's see if we can just quickly do these. They're just a regular tank as I had a couple. Um, that I made the other day that were part of the demo. So I'm just gonna thumb those off right there on the on the bevel. And put them on the on the banding wheel. Just gonna do a just with my fingernail and some water. Prepare the and these days I'm just doing this on the bottom bit here. Usually I don't bother to do anything on the bottom when you attach a handle, but I'm just I'm just I'm thinking it doesn't it isn't gonna hurt, is it? Take a handle, use my knuckle, fatten the end here. You've got to learn how to do this. This is a, a good tip. Using your, the point of your knuckle to, just to... And then a couple of fingers behind, apply the handle using my index finger on the underside as you see and then my, my thumb across the top here okay in the water and I just give it a few pulls to freshen it up keep this at, at a right angle, don't let it get like that, okay, because it will cause it to get weak there, okay, like that, and then when you're happy, you're going to bend it around like that, Check that he's he's straight. Then here I just wipe it once like that. And then with my thumb, smear it both ways. Once, twice, and <clears throat> three times. Okay. Put them on a the wetboard and then I'm looking now for my rounder. So I use an old yogurt, which I put into the mouth of here if it fits, it should just about fit. Depending on how how the depending on how how wide I threw it. it, they vary a little bit inevitably as I'm not a machine just sometimes they get a little bit yeah this one goes in a little bit more okay same again on the bevel there 
with a moist thumb go around like this okay you really don't need to do anything more than that you really ought not to be trimming mugs totally unnecessary I think But each to his own. You can trim mugs if you want to, but I don't. So as I apply the handle, you see how I'm doing it here. Give some support behind with these fingers. Okay, and across the top. Like that, you see. Just like that like that he said just like that okay give him a few pulls that freshens the handle up makes it makes it flow better when I go to do that if it's nice and wetted like I've like I've just showed you then the handle will flow nicely okay just here wipe it once smear one way smear the other way off this one is a little He's a little softer down below here. This uh, this mug, the, the bottom bottom section here is a little a little softer than the previous one. Okay. You know when you when you're finishing off your pots, any little bits of clay or stuff that are stuck on it. Now's the time to check it. Any little fingernail jabs. You know, inevitably, sometimes your fingernails leave a, a nail mark and such. You may want to just get rid of that. Okay. Put them on the wear board. Actually, we, we could put our seal on, couldn't we? While we're here. I'll just pop in there at the bottom. Like that. Same on this guy. So yeah, you do want to make sure that they are round. It's very easy after you put on handles. If you don't round them, you'll find that they're out of round. And you don't want that. You've got to bear in mind as well that the weight of the handle on the side of a mug, gravity is going to pull that handle down. And if it pulls it down, it's going to pull the mug out of shape. That's one of the reasons we put this collar on the top here, which is a visual thing, but also it acts to stabilize the top of the mug so that it doesn't pull out of shape. It's not a bad idea. We have one handle left, that's because I always pull an extra handle. Because it's easy to pull an extra handle while you're already in the flow of pulling them, than to suddenly find, oh, I messed up on a handle, now I'm going to get my clay out again, and I've got to get my clay stuff out again, and I've got to go to trouble pulling another handle. Just pull one extra, It'll, you'll see why. And if you don't need it, you don't need it. Good. Keep your seals and things like this in a box. Okay? You won't lose them. If you don't, you will lose them, I guarantee it. Trust me. Trust me, he says. Okay, now we're going to go over there. Let's pick up this business. I've got a bit of glazing to do. Sorry, folks, it's just routine stuff. Oh my gosh, what's all this? Somebody's dropped off some wood.
How about that? That's a little bit over the top, Simon, is it? Better be careful you don't burn the place down. You're right. You are right. You know what? I went and got an 8x4 trailer load of all this wood. You see what it is? It's a mixture of kind of... I don't know what it is. It's from my local uh, pallet factory. It's an Amish pallet factory. They sold me a, a trailer load of wood. Five bucks. Can't beat that, can you? I can heat the house and the pottery for a month with that. Right, so what I'm going to do... Oh, some sunshine. So I've got some glaze here, which... Just going down into the bottom of the bucket to make sure that there's no glaze sediment sticking on the bottom of the bucket and in the corner of the bucket. So that's why I use this. Otherwise known as a Cajun stirrer. A Cajun food. But it works great in the pottery for stirring up your glazes. <laughs> or we go merrily down the stream. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah. Put that there. Okay, so I'll just use that for sort of uh, and then I use this this caterer's whisk. Clean the thoroughster. And then what next? So what I want to do is we in a picture. I wonder if I should have the camera on the other side. Yeah. Well, right, we'll just go from here. We'll go here like this. So I'm just going to do these are some tankers that are are dry. Uh, so I need to get them ready for raw firing. Give them a little, a little blow out. Well, that one has got some cracking going on there. Yeah, I better show you that. I don't know if you can see that, but right in the base there, because I added, a, with some of these tankers, I've been putting a bit of clay in the bottom here, just to, um, if you can see that there, it's just a sort of gusset of clay right in the very base there. I've scrapped doing that idea though, I think, because... And that one's got a little crack there as well. I'm just going to, in cases like that where it's not too bad, I do what you just saw me do there. I'm going to put some glaze, glaze over it. I think it will cover it up. The reason it cracked was because I left these bodies just a little bit too long. I think this is one I repaired with some vinegar. That seems to have worked. Vinegar and uh, dry clay works quite well. Okay. Just blowing them out because I had them sat over there on the stove for a while. You know, they gather a bit of dust, etc. Okay. So. bone dry and what I do is I'm going to put the, the glaze on the inside like that, swirl it 
swirl it around and now pour it out. Okay. And now I'm applying some water to the outside. And that's it. That's now done. Now previously you will have seen me and I stopped doing it. You will have seen me take a sponge right after I have glazed it and wipe over the rim. I'm not doing that anymore. Why is that? The reason I'm not doing it anymore is because it was to prevent a double thick, too much thickness occurring at the top of the pot. Because I, when I dip the outside, I dip it in again. However, although my my logic was good, in a way it wasn't, because when I wiped over this raw clay with a sponge, it, it brought some of the grog to the surface right on the lip. So what I was finding was that after, after these were finally fired and came through the glazed firing, I was noticing that the rims were a little rough and I was just trying to work out why that was and I concluded that it, the reason why was because I wiped off with a sponge because I didn't want to have a double thickness there but in actual fact I don't need to do that now so if you are somebody who's doing this and you've been following me religiously <laughs> some people do but if you have you may find that uh, if you do what I'm doing now, you, you, you don't... It all depends on your clay, you see. Now my clay has a bit of grog in it. Now your clay may not. If it's a little bit of a groggy clay body, it will cause the grog to, to push through the glaze, you see. Yeah, so it's a case of, you know, we modify our method as we go because we learn from our little mistakes that we make I hope that we learn Such a relief not to have to bisque fire. You can just get these quickly glazed and decorated. And then into the kiln. Yeah, I've got to have a firing. I've got a bit behind with some of my orders. Because partly because I couldn't get out to it. Partly no, I I make no excuse. I was lazy. <laughs> Well, it was laziness because the studio out here was freezing cold. My kiln shed over there yonder was... Oof, it was freezing cold out there. Plus there was snow and ice everywhere out there. And I just... I just... I just thought I'd wait. I'd wait a bit, you know. That's what happened. Now though, it's kind of thawed out. And now I've got wood. Yeah, that was the other thing. I was a bit short of wood, you see. But I've got wood now, as you can see. I'm good to go. Okay. I want you to practice this raw glazing, okay? Just use the glaze that you're already using on your bisque, but instead of bisque firing it, just apply the glaze 
to the pots when they are bone dry. Make sure they're bone dry. And just do what I'm doing. Glaze the inside first. All right. And then let them dry back, you know. Let them dry a bit. And then glaze the Oh, actually, I've got to do some of these in here. Yeah, my merrily, merrily glazing. I've got supposed to be doing some of these in that other glaze. So, yeah, I've got another glaze. My, my, my milky glaze. All right, so there we go. That's, that's how you do the first stage of the raw glazing. Uh, that's the method I use anyway. Um, yeah, this one's got a little crack down here. I've I may just take some uh, vinegar and dry clay, you know, make a little sort of paste. And then I put some vinegar on here first where the crack is and then take the paste and apply it into the crack. You'd be surprised how well that can work. I'll tell you, it's almost mind-blowing how that works. You may have to do it more than once. You may do it and then it, you'll see that it'll dry, but then crack again a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's well worth doing. So go to my website. We're going to wrap this clip up now, I think. Go to my website, simonleachpottery.com. We have treadle wheels and making a new batch of treadle wheels if you are interested in that uh, a treadle wheel kit wheels they are made they're a kit i do have one over there are we in the picture oh there's a wood over here you see that one over there in the distance it's got like a that's a brand new finished wheel uh, i've spoken about it in the past that one is available if anybody wants it but they have to come and pick it up i'm not shipping it Absolutely not shipping it. But the others, the kit wheels, we can ship. Uh, prices, etc., on the website. Go there, check it out. If you're interested in coming on a workshop, the workshop dates are all up there. If you want to come book on a, a workshop, we're going to be carrying on doing workshops as usual. As per usual. Um, if you want to wear a mask, you can wear a mask. I don't wear masks. So, you, you, on the basis of that, you may decide, well, if he's not wearing a mask, I'm not going. That's perfectly fair enough if that's what you want to do. Um, that's your decision. But if you're okay with me not wearing a mask, then you can come on a workshop. And um, come and have some fun here in Milheim. Uh, Pottery tools, as usual, and uh, yeah, some pots up there on the Etsy site, you know, it's not the sum total of all the pots I have, it's just a few that I put up there. Uh, yeah, if you've got any special requests for videos, or for me to show you something, so long as it's not way out there, you know, I'll try and do it, but... Um, yeah, write to me, simonleachpottery at gmail.com. Thanks for joining me, folks. As, as usual, here we are, just in the, in the studio, just doing what we do as potters. Have fun in the clay. Okay, hey, keep practicing. See you later. Bye for now.